Hey everybody, I'm Todd Sadowski. Today, record. Record. Hey everybody, I'm Todd Sadowski. Today, we're going to be replacing the rattan in this chair. Uh, you can see it's got a lot of damage. Uh, we're going to be pulling out the old rattan, removing this bamboo strip here, and we're going to replace it with some new rattan. Uh, I've got some uh, new spline here that's going to go around the edges. I've got my rattan that I ordered off of uh, Amazon. Okay, these are the tools that we're going to need to do this. We're going to need a measuring tape, a razor knife, a little pry bar, some pliers, uh, a chisel, a standard screwdriver, uh, a pair of nippers, and a hammer, pencil, some scissors, little wedges. Here's a, uh, a pneumatic staple gun that shoots this size staple to put our spline in. And then we've got our paint supplies and glue over here. So as we get more into uh, rep the repair, we're going to, uh, I'll introduce more of those things a little bit later. Okay, so this is the rattan that I've ordered. I got it off of Amazon. This is 18 inches wide. It's, I ordered um, eight feet of it. Uh, each one of these is about 20 inches long, so I've got an extra couple of inches on the top and the bottom. It's approximately uh, $18 per foot, so you've got to be careful when you order it. Some, what I found, I had, to do, I had to order it twice. Uh, the holes on the rattan that I ordered said it was half an inch, but they weren't half an inch. This is kind of a fine half an inch. I, I looked to see on the internet uh, if anybody actually took a tape measure to the holes. So each of these holes should be a half an inch apart uh, using a tape. And I did the same with my holes on my rattan here, and that way I was sure that I was getting the right size uh, holes in the rattan. Otherwise, they could be 5 8 and it could really make a big difference in the look of your final project. All right, so the big thing that you want to do is make sure that you, the size of your holes on your new rattan are the same size as your old rattan. Uh, this is half inch rattan in fine mesh, uh, and online they actually had a tape ruler, or tape measure or a ruler on there showing the distance between the holes. So if I take this ruler and I put my half inch and my one inch mark right in the center of the holes, you can see how they line up almost perfectly. All right, so uh, it starts to get off a little bit here, but it's close enough. As you can see, if I, if I do it on my rattan on my chair, and I line that up right in the center of that hole. You can see that half inch over, it lines right up at the center of that hole. Half inch over, it lines up the center of that hole. Half inch over, it lines up pretty much at the center of that hole as well. So that's how you want to choose your rattan. So be careful when you're ordering online. Uh, you could end up with something a little bit with a, with a slightly smaller hole or a slightly larger hole, and your rattan can be, uh, your rattan won't look the same as your original. Uh, so let's get started and uh, we'll uh, start removing our rattan on our chair. Okay, so we're ready to pull out this piece of bamboo that's wrapped around here. Um, it's actually plastic. I want to take it out very gently because if I, take, if, I, if I pry up on it too hard, I could end up breaking it and I want to be able to reuse this um, on my chair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little pry bar that I have here. Um, I may need my screwdriver and I may perhaps need uh, the hammer to kind of drive this under. Uh, so I want to keep all these handy, and I've also got some, some pliers um, that I can pull my small staples out with. So I'm going to just start on one of these edges here, and I'm going to lift up on it and gently pull this out, work my way around. Okay, you can see it coming up just like that. Mm -hmm. This is actually not bamboo, it's actually rubber. So it's very flexible, but I still want to be very careful. It's glued down and nailed down. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get off there with the glue. I want to be careful not to uh, scrape the sides of the chair. I don't want to have to do any more repairs than what I'm already doing. I can hear the, uh, the spline that it's glued to kind of coming apart as I do this. Okay, so that piece is all completely done. 
Uh, a little bit later, we're going to be taking this piece off of here, and I don't see any of those. Here's one of the um, there's one of the staples right there that we're going to pull out. That's what I've got these here for. And I'll just use a little uh, my I'll use my chisel, and I'll just chisel that stuff off of there a little, in a little bit. I'm going to continue to work my way around here with my with my flat bar and my screwdriver. Just kind of get that under there and work my way around. Okay, notice how I'm not prying like this, but I'm actually prying left to right. All right, there we go, and I'm gonna leave that, those two pieces together. All right, so the next order of business is to get the spline out right here. So in order to get out the spline, we've got our staples that are right here, 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 and on down. We also have these little pin nails too, so I'm gonna to have to remove those with my pliers. So I'm gonna start with the ones with uh, the regular staples, and I'll use my screwdriver here and lift those out. There you go, you can see that kind of just lifts out of there, and I can pull them. There's a little pin right here, just pull that pin out. There's another pin right here. Pull that one out. You can dig right down into that spline. And if it gets kind of messed up, we don't, we're not worried about that. Dig down in, lift that up, pull that staple out, grab our staple, rock it over. Here's a little bit of a piece of wood that they stuck in there. So just kind of remove that. Looks like it was a filler piece. I want to be careful not to damage the uh, the chair itself, so be careful on that. We've got another little tiny staple. Pull that out too. Remove that one. Remove this corner one as well while I'm right here. Okay, we'll be very careful not to damage anything over here. Um, but I'm not worried at all about this old rattan, so I'm going to probably cut that out in just a few more minutes. Okay, now we're going to measure out our rattan. We need 23 inches, so I'm going to pull my tape. Got it latched on the edge, find my 23 inch mark, and I'm right here. And I would generally use a straight edge on something like this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut straight across these holes, and I'm gonna follow these holes all the way across. So I'm gonna remove my tape, and just go ahead and cut. Okay, so here's our piece of rattan. We're 18 inches wide here, 23 inches long. Uh, now we have to soak it. And the reason that we soak it is to make it a lot more supple and pliable so that when we're putting it in the chair and pushing the spline in that we don't crack and break the edges. So I've got a bucket full of just plain water right here. I'm gonna coil this up like this and drop it in. And it should soak for at least 20 minutes. It can go a little bit longer than that if needed. I also have my spline. I also want to soften that up and have it expand a little bit. You can see it's a little bit uh, 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 rigid, so we're going to soak that as well. I'm going to leave that, those two pieces in our bucket of water, and then we'll come back to that in a little bit. All right, so I've removed all of my staples from the spline, uh, the small ones and the large ones. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out this channel uh, and it remove, the, ex remove the spline that's in there and also some of the rattan that's going to be kind of glued in there. So I'm going to use my small screwdriver and just kind of uh, lift up everything out of there and, um, and then just clear everything out of that channel and make it as, as good as we can. So this takes a lot of elbow grease. So you really got to start to jam that screwdriver in there. A lot of glue in the bottom of the channel, and there's a lot of rattan 
kind of hanging out in there. We may need our little hammer to tap along. Lift that up. They've got a small staple way deep down inside of there. I grab it, pull it up and out. Go all the way into my corner, make sure that corner is completely clear. So I've cleared out most of my channel. I got a little bit of residual glue in here. So I'm just going to go around with the screwdriver and just try to clean out just those last little corners and anything that's, uh, that hasn't been completely cleared out. So scraping along, yeah, digging out the corners. Anywhere where there's glue or little chips of wood. So our channel is all clear all the way around. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is inserting our rattan. So our rattan is 18 inches wide. We bought 18 inch uh, material because as you can see uh, from about here to here at our widest point is 18 inches. That gives us enough extra on each side uh, that when we, when we push it into the channel um, that there's enough for it to hold, for the, for the uh, spline to hold into. Uh, going this direction, it's approximately 19 inches from channel to channel. So we want to go a little bit extra on this side and a little bit extra on this side. So we want to, so we are going to cut it about 23 inches. Okay, so it's time to remove our rattan. Uh, over 20 minutes has passed, so it's nice and soft and supple. Uh, we've got our spline here too. It's been soaking, and uh, now we just got to kind of shake it off and. Uh, we can go start to insert it into the uh, into the chair back. All right, so the next order of business is deciding on the size of our spline. So we're gonna have to order some new spline, as you can see. So how do you know what size to buy? So what we wanna do is we wanna measure the inside of our channel. So from here over to the edge here is uh, 10 millimeters. So we wanna buy something that's a little bit smaller than that. I believe mine is a seven millimeter spline. So that gives us a little bit of uh, space on this side and this side when the spline sets into the channel right there. Now if you pan over to here, you can see that that hole is maybe five to six millimeters. Uh, I know I've got a little bit of space over here, but you can see it's, it's a much smaller area. So it's going to be a real challenge. This is supposed to lay in here like this, but what I might end up doing is kind of laying that in there this way. But you can see there's not a lot of room on either side for our uh, rattan to go down inside and come up the other side. So that's going to be a real challenge. But the rest of this, if we kind of look over this side, we've got a little bit of room in here. All right, so the next thing I want to do is find my center point of my rattan and I'm going to line it up with the center of the chair. So we're going to measure here. We've got 18 inches almost exactly. So 9 inches is my center. So this is my center 
right here. So I'm going to mark that with a pencil. Right, and if I follow that line down here, all the way down, this is going to be the center line that I'm going to line up on the opposite side. Okay, so this is the front side of our rattan. It's very smooth. I believe that the rattan is pressed. Um, it has a very smooth finish on it. That smooth finish also doesn't accept stain very well. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to uh, work with that. On the flip side, or the back side, it's a lot rougher in feel. If you look at it very closely, there's a little more texture to it. This side accepts stain very well, and so when you rub the stain on it, it soaks right into the, into the rattan. We're going to use this as the back side, and we're going to use this side as the front of our chair. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is put some glue in the channel. I've got uh, just regular wood glue. I'm going to just put some glue right down in here. Now this glue is water-based. Since I soaked this in water, those two should uh, be very compatible. All right, so I have my center of my seat right here and right here. I have marked the center of my rattan right here and right here. So I'm gonna line those two up. There's my center right here, and here's my center right here. So now that, that piece of rattan down the middle will go right down the center of my chair. And that'll keep me level, keep me level all the way around. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these wedges that I cut out of some 1x4s. They're kind of blunt on the edges as you can see and I'm going to push the rattan down into the channel all the way around. I'm going to start right here. I've got my little uh, center index mark and I've got it over my center. And what I'm going to do is right where this edge is, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fold that over and push that down into there. That kind of starts in there. Then I'm going to kind of work my way around with these wedges. Make sure I stay on center. And I'm going to leave these wedges in, and they're kind of going to—they're going to kind of hold everything in place as I work my way around. Go to this, uh, the opposite side. It's going to be next. Line up my center again. Push that rattan down into that channel. Pretty sturdy in there. All right, so the next thing I want to do is kind of press this into, into the sides here. I use this one. I'm going to push my rattan right down inside of there. Now, my channel is really thin here, so what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of this other, these other strands here. So I'm going to cut this down and I'm going to pull out some of these strands. So let me get a pair of scissors. I'm going to cut this end off here. Actually, I'm going to cut out this string. I'm going to pull out some of these strands. Let's see if I can get it to be a little bit easier to push down in here. So I've got this little wedge right here. I've rounded off the edges, make it a little bit more comfortable to work with. So I can jam that down in there. Pull out a few more of these. <coughs> Work onto this side. We have to pull out a few of these over here too.
some of these wedges have smaller ends. So I'm trying to use the small ones to tuck some of this stuff in. Boy, I'm never going to get that spline in some of these spots. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is push our spline into this channel to hold down our, our rattan. So we're going to measure out our spline. I'm going to push it all the way against the side of the chair here. Kind of put it in the channel. Then I'm going to make a little pencil mark on it right there. So there's our pencil mark and I'm going to take it over to the saw, do a quick cut on it, and then we'll insert it into the chair. Okay, so I just need to cut my spline right here. Uh, you can use any saw. I just happen to have a, a uh, band saw right here. Just like that. Okay, so here's our spline. We're going to press it into this channel right here. I want to put a little bit more glue down in the channel to make sure that we've got some glue on the spline and plenty of glue holding our rattan in. Put that down in the channel. Drop our spline in like this. Now we're going to take our hammer. We're going to tap our spline in. Gonna line it up. It fits in there really well. Use my wedge. It kind of wants to twist a little bit because it's not really round. So I want to make sure it goes in there, it holds nice and tight. Okay, top side is done. Once again, I'm going to measure up my spline, go from end to end. It doesn't have to have a perfect fit. I've got my, I've got my mark right there. Take it to the saw. All right, so I want to put some more glue right down through this channel. Our next piece of spline, drop in here. All right, so the next thing I want to do is shoot some staples into our spline and hold it down. I've got an upholstery gun. It shoots this size staple. It's a half inch leg with a half inch crown. And I'm just going to position it right here. You want to make sure your staples aren't too long that they're going to come out the back side of your material. So be sure to check the size of those. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to put some staples in this side. And that way it'll pull it nice and taut this way. So I'm going to put my staple gun in here. All right, going to measure up for my other side. Right here, to here, gonna mark it. Be careful not to get any of the glue on the facing. If you do, it's gonna not allow any of the glue, the uh, stain to adhere to it, and it'll be a clear spot on it. So this channel, this spline, as you can see, it's, it's wide going this way and narrow this way, uh, which is kind of nice because I have a really narrow channel here. These were much wider on this side, so I turned the, ch so I turned the spline flat ways. I think for this one, because the channel gets so narrow here, I'm actually going to turn it so it's much on its, on its thinner axis. So I'm going to kind of lay that in here just like this. And the spline is fairly supple. Yes. 
and our final side. Our spline. Once again, this is very thin over here, so I'm going to use my thin side. Press it in place. thing we want to do is we want to be able to trim off all of this excess. So I've got my razor knife here and just go right up against my spline and just cut that excess off right there. Okay, so here is our bamboo trim pieces uh, that I took off earlier. On the back side, we've got some of this wood here. There's some staples sticking out like here, staples sticking out here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pliers, pull out all these staples. Okay. Then we're going to take our chisel, going to very carefully. Try to peel that old wood off there and maybe a little bit of the old adhesive as well. Okay, so we'll work all these pieces, all this wood off of here, and then we're going to put these onto our, onto our chair. All right, so here we are. Now we're onto the final portion of our chair caning. Uh, we want to now stain our cane to match the existing chair or get somewhere close to that. Uh, there's a lot of different techniques on how to do that. Um, I'm going to show you mine. Uh, the real challenge with this is getting the front side of the, of, the, uh, of the cane, which really has a difficult time of accepting stain, uh, to match up what's here. Um, I'm going to show you a few examples of, of some stain and, uh, and how it takes to the caning and uh, what you can do to, uh, to help it uh, absorb a lot more color and uh, to get the, the finish that you want. Okay, so here are a few samples that I, that I had done. Uh, when I was at, uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot, um, I actually had I picked out a few of the stains and I asked the, uh, the paint guys to kind of, let's, let's open them up, uh, rub a few of them on here. And you can see how the color takes to uh, the caning. This is the original caning right here. All right, so we've got, got that. Um, these are just the stains rubbed onto the cane. I don't know if you can see um, how it doesn't really absorb very well into the front of the cane. On the back side of the caning, you can see it absorbs in quite well. All right, um, but uh, I wasn't real happy with the way any of these came out. I'm going to show you as I uh, as I put this up against the regular uh, chair, uh, the one that's actually finished, the older chair, um, how they don't really match up so well. Um, and then these are some other ones that I that I did as well, and these had polyurethane on them too, and I did like the way some of these came out. So you can see how much different these colors are right here as you look through here than the original. This has more of a, a golden kind of hue to it. Um, and you can see a lot of these are just kind of bright white and then I've got dark brown here and there's just some brown here. And I wasn't really uh, happy with the way a lot of these were coming out. So, um, so then I decided I'd try something else and uh, this has a three color combo on it, and I'll go over that in just a moment. So this is just my stain, uh, this is a stain, this is a stain with the poly on it. And, uh, and then up here, this is probably my best part right in here, uh, this is a stain and poly and an aging technique, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. I also want to take a moment and show you the back side of the chair and how it compares to the front side. So this is the back side. And these are my staining samples. This is the back side of the rattan too. So you can see the difference in the color. I'm gonna kind of move that, kind of show you how well or how well they didn't uh, match up. 
So I think this one here at the top, I don't know if you can see that right here, uh, this color right in here, uh, I think matches up the best. And I'm going to show you how I achieved that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off all around the rattan. So when I, when I go ahead and stain the rattan, uh, I don't get stained on all the other uh, areas. And especially I want to cover up the base or the seat of the chair so I don't get any stain or anything else on that as well. So let me start with that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply stain to the rattan. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to first, before I stain it, I want to bring the brightness down some. And the way I'm, I'm going to do that is I'm going to use an aging technique. And I found this online some time ago. And what it is is it's a concoction of vinegar and steel wool. And you let the steel wool ferment in the vinegar for about two weeks. Now this has been fermenting in here for several months. Um, and we also added in some coffee grounds too, which kind of gives it a little bit more color. But uh, a lot of it happens with some sort of reaction between the, the steel wool, the vinegar, and then the, uh, the tannins in the wood itself. So uh, it goes on kind of clear, and then it actually ages the wood, uh, and it gives it a nice, rich, kind of and authentic looking aging effect to it. So I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to just grab a chip brush, and I'll brush this on. very runny so you want to make sure you got everything covered very nicely and really work it into the rattan brush that on there really brush it into the uh, all the crevices you'll get quite a few drips so make sure you have your you have a cushion on there make sure it's covered and the rest of the chair you may want to have that covered as well just this. Now this works over time, so as it sits, the longer it sits, the more color you're going to see it change. Now this is also the back side, so it's not going to, it's going to accept this a lot, a lot more and better than on the front side. So I'm all done with the back side here. I'm going to flip this around. going to apply this to the front side. Now once again, this isn't a stain. This is causing a reaction with the wood and the tannins in the wood. And uh, it's bringing the color down. You can already see the difference. See this up top, right along there. How much more brown it is. Okay, there we go. We're just going to let that sit for a little while, um, and then once it sits for a while, we're going to put a fan on it. And we're going to dry it down, and then I'm going to show you the next stage and uh, and how we stain and polyurethane this. Okay, so there's one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, before I go on to the next step is uh, right in here. You're going to notice a piece of wood here and here. Uh, I cut down these extra pieces of wood. They look kind of like this. Um, it's just cut out of a one by four. It's probably an eighth of an inch wide uh, by, a, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch cross. Um, and the reason that I put those on is once I affix these pieces of trim on there, this was up a little bit higher here. It's nice and level. And when I seat these pieces on, it's going to be nice and level like that. But in right at about this point here and this point up here, they were kind of sunken in like maybe, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. So I put the strips in here. You can see them. I glued them and tacked them in with the staple gun. And then I'll allow this piece of trim to be even with this side and, uh, and give it a nice solid surface for it to, uh, to grip to uh, right here. So when I glue and pin those on. And I'll go over more of that uh, later when I show you how to apply these. Okay, I'm going to put a fan on this for just a little bit. Uh, that way we'll dry this down. We don't want there to be uh, any moisture 
in the wicker. Uh, the stains that we're going to be using are oil-based, so uh, the oil base will certainly clash with any kind of liquid or water um, that we might be using on there. So we'll let this run for about, I don't know, 20 minutes to maybe 40 minutes, depending on how long it takes to completely dry that out. All right, I just want to take a moment and show you the difference in what the regular rattan looks like as opposed to the rattan with the vinegar stain on it. So here's our standard rattan. It's another chair that I had done a little bit earlier. And then here's the rattan where I put the vinegar stain on it. You can see the, the difference in the color tones of those. And I think this is gonna be a nice uh, base for our, for our uh, stain. So um, that's a really good way to start off with if you wanna bring those tones down a little bit. Okay, so the vinegar is dry and it's ready for stain. Uh, I looked around at a lot of different stains, like I said, but the one I settled on was this. This is called Australian Timber Oil, and I found this at Lowe's. It was about $13 for the can, and it's a spray stain. Um, and uh, I've already done it on one or two chairs, so uh, it looks really great, um, and I'm going to show you how it works. I've already shaken the can, so I'm just going to apply it right on here. I've got everything masked off. And it gives really nice even coverage all over. As you can see up close, how nice and even the color is all around. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is the back side of the chair. And you can see how the, the, uh, the vinegar has really darkened the rattan. Uh, here's a sample of what it used to look like right here. So um, this looks really great. Uh, the stain that I'm using is a little bit reddish in tone, um, and this is very, very brown. I'm thinking that this brown tones in here is going to help bring the, the red tones down from this. Also, the top coat of polyurethane is very brown, too, so that's going to help bring down those uh, red tones as well. So I'm going to apply this. Okay, we may or may not need a second coat on this. I'm gonna take a look at it as it dries down. Okay, so we've let the stain dry overnight and uh, it's still a little bit tacky, but it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty well dried up. Uh, so the next step in this is going to be adding a polyurethane. And I've chosen a polyurethane stain. So this has a little bit of brown in it and uh, I'm just gonna go right over this and it's gonna take that little bit of redness out of this stain too. So uh, I've already got it mixed up. I just need a little can. I'm going to take this and my chip brush. And just apply a light coat right over top of the stain. I got this in a satin gloss, so it's not real shiny. It's gonna do two things. It's gonna seal in the stain base, provide a protective layer, and it's gonna add some brown tones as well. Okay, so I wanna add a little feathering into this. So I wanna make it a little bit darker on the edges. That's the way it was originally. And a lot of this has some, some dark edges like right where the, uh, where the joints are here on the bamboo. So I'm gonna kind of match that up and I'm gonna use a little bit of dark walnut stain. Now this stain has dried down considerably and it's just a lot of uh, pigment in the bottom. Uh, but I'm gonna just kind of dab into it. I'm just gonna kind of brush it into the, into the sides here. I'm just gonna bring that tone down right on the edges. Blend that into the middle. all the way around. Just really thin coat, just kind of whisk it in, blend it with kind of like a cross thatch. Just blend those colors. I want it to blend in nicely into the chair 
so we don't have abrupt start and stop lines. And what I'm probably going to do is after I've done this is take my, my poly and then blend the edges. Okay, then I'm going to take my polyurethane. All right, so I have my base coat of stain. I've got one coat of poly shades on there. Uh, I've got a little bit of darker stain going around the outside. And for my final coat, I'm gonna do one more uh, coating of poly shades. It's gonna help blend in uh, the two tones that I have on there, bring this down a little bit darker and make it more brown and less red. And uh, it'll also help protect the color even for a longer period of time. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that, just a quick coat. Okay, and I've blended it in all the way around. You can see how it brings the color down a little bit more in the center, makes it a lot more brown, a lot less red. Got its dark shading on the outside, and I can't wait to uh, take the tape off and really take a look at it and add the trim on it as well. There you have it. Okay, the next step is gonna to be to add on our trim, which is right here. So it's gonna go on like this. I'm gonna use a pin nailer and nail this down. But before I pin nail it, I wanna fasten it on with some, uh, with some glue. So I've got heavy duty uh, PL375 from Loctite. I'm just gonna put a real thin bead around here. I don't want a lot of it oozing out the edges. So it's just a light bead. And the pin nail is going to hold it on. But uh, this adhesive will make sure that it stays on as people sit down in the chair over the many years of use that it's going to get. So now I'm going to put my trim in place. This one, you can see it's got a lot of, uh, of, uh, of the finish removed. I'm going to touch that up as well a little bit later. This is a water-based glue, so I'll be able to remove any of the excess after I get all of this installed. And then finally, our final piece I left it together there in the corner. Okay, so now I'm gonna glue this down. And what I'm gonna use is this, uh, it's, it's, it's a micro pin nailer, 23 gauge pin. The pins look like this. They're three quarters of an inch long. They're super small, they go into the gun just like that. Okay, so now with a little water on a brush. Okay, and then finally we've got a mix of our this is our stain, our paint, our dark stain, and some poly. And I'm just going to kind of go around here and, and do a little touch up.
go around with their paper towel. All right, that looks pretty fantastic. I think everything's pretty much done. And there you have it, our project is all finished. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.